Hi everyone, in today's video I wanted to talk about nail surface damage because uh, lately it's been a passion of mine. So um, surface damage and right away when this happens people blame the nail polish remover or acetone and so in this video I wanted to see how damaging a polish remover. I came to some very interesting conclusions and in this video I wanted to show you pictures of what I'm basing my conclusion on. So this is super interesting. Please let me know what you think. I'm very, very interested in your experiences as well. So this story here, today's video is based on two of my clients, two of my regular clients, but I'm seeing the same results. Like these are typical results. So this is not just based on two people, but pretty much my whole practice. So, okay, what do we have here? We have a regular client of mine and as you can see, there is some significant um, nail surface damage and there was some yellowing. And this was three years ago and this was in the winter. So this client of mine wanted to try IBX. So that's what we did. We used IBX treatment and this is right after the treatment. So as you can see, a bit of a uh, improvement. And this is after oil application. So as you can see, sometimes oil really hides a lot of damage. So anyway, so we decided to do, give her a break. And this client has been a regular client of mine for quite a few years. She was getting uh, pedicures every single month, very consistent. So she decided to go without nail polish, but she couldn't stand her nails. So she applied her own polish, which was OPI. And two weeks later, when I removed it, this we were back to square one, to some surface damage. And I usually use pure acetone to remove the polish. So right away, people would be like thinking, okay, so this must be the acetone, right? But not so fast. All right, so we did not continue with the IBX treatment because I kind of felt like it's two steps back, two steps forward, two steps back. But this was around the time when I discovered Dazzle dry, and we switched to uh, um, we switched to Dazzle dry, and this was um, after two pedicures. So this was April, as you can see, two pedicures later. So you know, I was very new to Dazzle dry, and I was a little bit you know uh, hesitant, or I wasn't that convinced. So I said here, not sure if it's making a difference. The nails are looking better, but th that is probably partially because Dazzle Dry Prep solution is not super drying and as it contains some water and glycerin, but it's alcohol based still. I will keep you updated. So this was April and we continued with monthly pedicures and this was September. So this is, uh, you can definitely see a difference. The biggest difference is, first of all, in yellowing. So you can still see some yellowing. There is some surface damage right in the middle here, like quite a lot. As you can see, this has grown out up down to here. Same thing, these two spots moved down and there is no surface damage here. So this is very interesting. So as the, nail, as the toenails grow really, really slow, the progress is going to be very slow and very often people kind of just give up and they think that they are not seeing any difference. Uh, meanwhile, the difference um, is visible after quite a while. So this was a year later update and check this out. Check this out a year later. The damage was completely gone. There was no yellowing. So look at this and look at the initial pictures, yellowing and surface damage. So I didn't change anything else. I just changed the nail polish. So based on this, I really don't think that the acetone once every two weeks or once every month wiping the nails with acetone. So based on this, I really don't think the acetone is causing or the nail polish remover the damage, but the polish itself. Because the only thing that I changed when it comes to this client is the nail polish. So clearly still using acetone, still doing everything exactly the same. But you might say, okay, this is coincidence. Maybe she got healthier. Maybe, maybe she was using oil more often, which she didn't. So let's look at my other client. So this is very, very interesting now. So I really appreciate that this client was able to do this test with me because this was, um, this was difficult. So what I did with this client, I, I thought, okay, let's just 
try applying polish on one foot and still doing the same pedicures, still doing the same steps, but just the only thing, the only difference between the nails would be that this one would wear polish and this one wouldn't. So let's look at these nails. So this client actually, when it comes to pedicures, she was not my regular client. She did her own pedicure. So basically she just kind of shortened her nails and put nail polish on. Okay. This was 2019. Okay. So this client, as you can see, has some surface damage. Um, after wearing a nail polish, she said in the summer. So, which makes sense because this is about four months of growth approximately. So you can see, um, surface damage from the, from the nail polish right here, right? You can see pretty healthy nail growth here. So this nail seems to uh, be a little bit more damaged. So I didn't want to put nail polish here because then we wouldn't know you could blame the damage on the, the nail polish use. So I decided to polish this foot and leave this foot alone. So here, this was after, this was before the pedicure and this was after the pedicure, the same day. So as you can see here, clearly, nice and even nice and smoother surface. You, you, you see less of this dryness, right? Okay. So at this time I polished just this foot and wiped this foot with alcohol acetone, all the steps, the same steps that I did with this foot. So let's see if we did any notes here with pure acetone to make sure. I also wiped the non-polished nail with pure acetone, like scrubbing like a nail polish. So to make sure that both sides are treated the same, uh, the same with only one single exception, which will be the nail polish. So this was January, 2019. I didn't have dazzle dry. So I used, um, C and D I used C and D Vinylux in some kind of a nude color. So a month later, not much of a difference, but we see some yellowing definitely. And this nail is growing out nicely because you can see here, it's a little bit higher. You can see that the damage is growing out. This side is growing out nicely. This side just looks a little bit more yellow. So now let's fast forward to March after two pedicures. Hmm. And after two pedicures, before the pedicure, after I just removed the polish, you see the white spots, which would be a surface damage. And this was after a pedicure, the same day. And as you can see here, pretty healthy nail already, right? compared to again here. You can see that this is growing out two months later, right? March. Yes. Two months later, but this one is definitely a little bit yellow and there was a big white spot. And where's that white spot coming from? Let's just see it's here. It's right here, that damaged surface. So this was March. And let's see how the nails looked after in April. So three months of wearing nail polish. Not only you see the, 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 the surface damage here, but you see a new surface damage over here. And again, this foot, this nail was wiped with acetone, just like the other one, but we see absolutely no damage. And you know, some people kind of blame this damage on wearing tight shoes and and uncomfortable shoes, but this client was definitely wearing shoes on both feet. Um, and the damage that we see, it's only on a nail polish damage. So now this is getting even more interesting. Okay. So April 26th. So let's update to, okay. So this was 2019. We finished the, um, the test, I guess here because I conclude, ah, yes, exactly. Okay. So what happened in, uh, April 26th? Okay. April 26th, the client begged me to do both of her toes, obviously, right? Because some summer was coming and, 
and she wanted a real pedicure this time. Okay, so this was August, so this was a year later. And look at her toes. This was after um, a summer of using Dazzle Dry polish. So I don't know what to tell you otherwise, right? Like this is incredible. So not only no yellowing, but also no surface damage on both of the nails. This one grew out nice and healthy and both nails were nice and healthy. So this was obviously before any oil, before the nail polish application. So the nails were wiped with, with prep. And this is the difference, how this damage grew out and no further damage happened. So again, what did I write here? I find Dazzle Dry consistently causes less or no surface damage to the nail because like, as, as I said previously, this is pretty consistent with all of my clients. I do find out of my, I don't know, 30, 40 clients that I had, I would say only two people still had some type of surface damage, kind of like this, not very, very bad and no yellowing whatsoever, even when using Dazzle Dry. So it can still happen. I'm not saying that for sure, absolutely, you will not get any surface damage, but definitely it was less and as you can see here i was still wiping the nails with pure acetone uh, removing the polish with pure acetone so i don't know what do you think like i really don't think that acetone wiping the nails with acetone once a month or even every two weeks causes any surface damage because this there is no surface damage and majority of my clients have no surface damage even though i wiped their nails with acetone and they did definitely on their toenails have surface damage before I was using Dazzle Dry. And the bottom line, what did I write here is it's not the acetone that causes dryness. It's also clearly not my pedicure techniques. Um, the client is still wearing regular shoes. In my opinion, it's a nail polish wear that can cause nail surface damage with the exception of Dazzle Dry, which Dazzle Dry has a different chemical uh, composition. So in my opinion, in my, my experience, it's not causing as much surface damage and definitely it's not causing any yellowing. So, you know, yes, people are getting sick and tired of me talking about Dazzle Dry and recommending Dazzle Dry and asking me for, yes, because it's expensive, right? And it's not available everywhere, but, you know, using very good quality up nail polish, it's, it was still causing this and Dazzle Dry doesn't cause that. So... This is why I recommend Dazzle Dry because I'm having such good results with it. So my conclusion, it's not the acetone. So guys, let me know what you think. This is really, really interesting. Um, the conclusion that I have is very different from the general kind of consensus because generally right away, everybody blames the nail polish remover. But in this case, I really don't see that. And you know, it's interesting because my gut feeling was telling me that it's not the nail polish remover and it's not the acetone. So these kind of findings, these, these um, tests really confirmed. And I know it's just two people, but like I said, it's pretty consistent with, with a lot of uh, my other clients. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.